Hey everyone, j Lights here, and in this Zippo Talk, we'll be speaking with Chuck Riley. Most of y'all know him as Riley66. He is an authorized Zippo dealer, but most importantly, he is a collector and a creator. I had the privilege of meeting Chuck Riley during Zippo's 90th anniversary, and he is an amazing individual with a lot of insight into the Zippo world. This will be a two-parter, and this part we will be speaking to Chuck Riley as the collector, and in the next part, we'll be speaking with Chuck Riley as the creator. So you're not going to want to miss this. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe. Welcome to j -Row Lights. Hey everyone, j -Row Lights here. And today we have a very special guest. We have most of y'all know him as Riley66. We have Mr. Chuck Riley, the collector, creator, and authorized Zippo dealer. Chuck, howdy. How are you? I am hot, but doing good. <laughs> yeah, so you're it's you know, you're you're up in uh New York and it's like in the 90s up there, right? Yeah, it's not not unheard of. We just don't get it very often. Right. Well, that's hey, uh, Anytime you want to get a little hotter, feel free to come down to Mississippi and I can accommodate you. I've been there one time and it was very swampy. As far as the Zippo community, you are like the top guy. You, know, you may not think you are, but as uh, someone who recently just got in the Zippo community, uh, myself, I really respect all that you have done for the Zippo community. And uh, like I said, we all know you as Riley66. I mean, I, I got... You have helped my one of my major themes out a lot, the the flame series. And uh, but what a lot of people really don't know is you're a collector yourself. Yeah. And that's I mean, that's how you got started. What we want to know is we want to know how long you've been collecting and how you got started in Zippos. Oh, sure, sure. Yeah. Um, I worked before I started doing Zippo's full-time in 2016. I worked in the vintage guitar business and I, I started collecting Zippo's in 2010. Um, we used to do a lot of guitar shows and we would head west. We'd go Route 86 west out of New York and one of my co-workers, we'd, we'd go down the highway, there'd be this big sign that said Zippo Museum, you know, and he, he asked me, you ever been there? I'm like, no, never been there. He goes, we should stop. Zippos are really cool. I'm like, okay, we'll do that. And then it probably was the next trip he actually gave me uh, before I, I picked him up early one morning and he, he goes, I'm giving you your first Zippo and I will hold it up to my camera. It's this Zippo rule. And um, he used to work for a book binding company and he said in the adhesive that they would use, randomly there'd be a, a zippo ruler so he gave me this one and it's etch and paint um and i was just like wow this is really cool i didn't know i just like i love the design um so then we we stopped at the museum and that really really started it for me um my first zippo that i bought was on route 66 in um what was it clinton oklahoma Route 66 Museum, and if I was smart, I would have pulled it out of that case back there, but I forgot, um, and it was, I don't even know it was an official Zippo product, to be honest with you. I think it is, because it has a Zippo, or excuse me, a Route 66 emblem on the front of the lighter. I've seen lots of other collectors with that one, um, but but that was the, the start of it for me. Technically, your first Zippo wasn't a lighter at all, but right. was that, wow. Rule. <laughs> And so then that was in 2010. Yes. And that, so that you, you started collecting a year after me, I started collecting in 09. That's awesome. And, and so in that is about 10, 11 years now, how many do you have in your collection? I would say right now it's somewhere in the 300 to 350 range. It fluctuates a little bit. I, I don't really sell much out of my collection. That kind of already happened a few years ago where I kind of shifted focus a little bit. And what has that shifted this might, into? <laughs> this might be a shocker. It was Route 66 lighters. Um, so I bought that first one on Route 66 and 
you know, the, I mean, it, it, at the peak, I probably had close to 50 that were uh, Route 66 themed. Um, and uh, it was a lot of fun. And then, but, you know, as I started the business, kind of shifted and some of that inventory had to, had to go into uh, getting the business going. Okay. So what are you looking for now when it comes to your personal collection? It, you know, really, it's just stuff that I, I like. You know, I, I did recently get an Ernie Pyle. That was my holy grail lighter. I'm probably jumping ahead here yeah. to that. <laughs> Uh, but it's such an incredible lighter and I've wanted one almost immediately uh, when I started collecting because, you know, I, I enjoy reading about World War II history and I knew about Ernie Pyle. And when I saw that lighter, you know, I was just like, one day I'm going to get one and to get one that's as clean as the one I was, that I have is pretty amazing. Yeah. What a lot of our viewers may not know is Zippo themselves do not own a Ernie Pyle. Uh, there's one in the museum, but it's leased. Yep. So not even Zippo has an Ernie Pyle lighter. So that's how rare an Ernie Pyle lighter is. Yeah, they are. It's totally cool. <laughs> <laughs> so what, uh, what other themes do you really look for? You know, I, I try to have a few cool vintage pieces. I've got a 1955 Lost Proof that I really like. Um, and, and then re it really is. It's just, I guess the theme would be lighters that Chuck likes. Yeah. You know, there that's, you go. It's that's... kind of a hodgepodge. Yeah. I've got a lot of lighters that are very sentimental to me. Um, my dad passed away a few months back and I got his small collection. Uh, most are Buffalo Bills. That's his team, mm -hmm. my team too. And um, and then a couple other ones I had bought them that just have, you know, the the sentimental value is yeah. just off the charts. There's just no way there would never be a price for them because it just reminds me of my dad. And it was something we got to share together and he really enjoyed. Did you get him into collecting or he, I did. Okay. <laughs> uh, I've I've inflicted a lot of people <laughs> with this yeah. Zippo collecting disease. It's a lot of fun. And he really got into it. Matter of fact, he went, um, I think of the years 2013 and 2014. Um, uh, the Zen Lighter Group at the time had some gatherings in Bradford in July. And my dad went a couple of times. He got to meet a lot of the collectors and just, you know, just people hanging around and talking about some common interest. You know, he, he loved that. And that, that's one of the big things I love too. You know, you get up, you can get people, you know, I, I'm friends with a Zippo collector who is a New England Patriots fan. Can you believe it? But I am, you know, because we both love Zippos. Yeah. Uh, through your almost decade of collecting uh, and also just knowing Zippos in general, like what, what are kind of the most difficult Zippos to find? Well, I mean, certainly now would be anything vintage that's still yeah. in the box. I, you know, I, they're still out there, but like 10 years ago when I started, it was a lot easier to find stuff in antique stores or flea markets. Um, I always, I sort of uh, liken it to mining for gold and yeah. you're sifting and sifting and sifting. And, um, <clears throat> you know, the, the one time out of a hundred, you find something cool kind of fuels you to keep going. But um you know, like I said, 10 years ago, it was a lot easier. Now it's, it's rough. It's, it's pretty much picked over. As far as a newer collector, uh, what, what are some recommendations that you have when it comes to searching for themes or things that may be more common or more affordable or just kind of better to get a collection started? Well, I think it's best to just start with what interests you. You know, if you're, if you're into baseball or football or NASCAR, that might be a place to start. And then the realization that you're probably going to change uh -huh. your themes as you go along. You're going to go all this way for a year and all of a sudden you're going to sell 90% of those and go over here. You know, um, I think it's start with what you like. Uh, I would also recommend getting some of the books to get you familiar uh, learning about what's, you know, what's real, what's not, because you see that question all the time. Um, and 
just be more than the person who will just ask the question online, which there's nothing wrong with that. Um, I've asked lots of questions. I still ask lots of questions. But to dig a little deeper, get some books like uh, David Poor's book. Mm -hmm. What is it? The, the Great Zippo, The Great American Lighter, I think is yeah. the title. Uh, both of Mike Grimaldi's books. Uh, I think it's You Thought Zippo Only Made Lighters. I'm butchering the title there. But he has two yeah. volumes. Those were the first two books I got. And I mean, I don't think it's an exaggeration to say I'm in those reference books at least two or three times a week still. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't have any of those books, but I uh, I had the privilege of having dinner with uh, Michael Grimaldi uh, cool. in Bradford. So a li uh, little group of us, uh, Alistair and Joe, Joe uh, Cohen, we had dinner with them. And I mean, just the, the knowledge, you know, oh, yeah. just crazy. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So. And I'm trying to think anything else for people starting. I, I think that would probably be it. And, yeah. you know, just, just uh, have fun because that's what it's about. Yeah, I mean that's you're right. That's what collect finding your own uh, own niche because it's yeah. And, and one thing that I've learned collecting over the past year of being active in the Zippo community is, you know, if if you're out antiquing and you find a good deal on something, buy it because yeah. you you know you don't know who else is you know I've I've you know found things like uh, Wisconsin Zippos uh, for my buddy Tom in Wisconsin. Mm -hmm. I just, you know, I find it, buy it, and he'll buy it for me at cost. And, you know, that yep. just it, that keeps the collecting uh, going for everybody. So, yeah, that, that's really cool. Uh, so, now kind of already talked about some of these with your themes, but what are your favorite pieces in your collection? Okay, I pulled, well, I think I pulled one <laughs> i think i talked about the i don't want to fall out is my uh yeah. 1955 loss proof we'll flip it around Ooh. Uh, am i allowed to jump ahead a little bit talk about it. this That's... okay uh this is my favorite box <laughs> yeah um uh, i'm gonna take the lighter out real quick it's um i don't i don't know it's kind of goofy but the insert on this box I just yeah. think it's super cool. And it's, it's the way they made it is really, really high quality. Um, be very expensive, I think, today to get yeah. these kind of boxes Show, on every Show it up one more time. Um, oh, yeah. I'll show you. So, it's, uh, so how does the, uh, do you have a, a regular red stripe box close by? And um, I don't. But you know what? I don't know if you can see this. I don't think this is red and white. Um, I think it's red and a very light blue, like the hmm. boxes. It'd be interesting um, if any of the guys who may have more than one, that's all I have, yeah. could, could chime in maybe on the comments on this video, because mine is not red and white. It's definitely a very, very, very light blue. Yeah, I, I can kind of see it through the camera. Yeah, but... it's uh, kind of like hmm. the back of the box. I and and the inside of it isn't it's not tight because one you, you have to have the, the yeah, loss proof area yeah 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 huh that's pretty neat so um, that's one of my favorites in my collection it was actually a, a birthday gift from a from a very good friend um and uh it's it's definitely one of my my top ones nice yeah that, that's that's pretty cool so what, uh, uh, do you have any favorites when it comes to the more modern Zippos, like 90s and up? Uh, yeah, you know, I really like the 90th anniversary lighter. Um, I know there's some, some controversy on the box. And when I first got them, I was like, oh, I got to, you got to be careful. Yeah. <laughs> but I, I love the, I, I actually like the box. I just, you know can't manhandle it <laughs> yeah yeah uh, but the lighter is awesome i i love all the techniques that they used on it you know and i I, mean, I can't help think that if you know george blaisdell could have seen into the future what they could do with the lighter i love all the 360 engraving yeah. and the armor and stuff it's it's really beautiful yeah I, it, the design is uh i you know uh, did did my recent collectible of the year ranking and 
I mean, the, the, you're right. The design is really great. I know some people, you know, have issues with quality of that, but I mean, I think you're spot on the, the engraving on, on that lighter specifically is really, really nice. Where do you think some of the top places, especially if you're a new collector or just collecting in general, where would you recommend the search start? Well, certainly at (laughs) Riley66.com, but um, (laughs) <laughs> uh, that's, that's going to have new stuff, uh, occasional vintage pieces, but where I'm going to go, um, definitely antique markets, you know, antique shops, antique malls. Um, you know, I try to do homework beforehand. You know, you, some places will say they're an antique shop and you go in and it's, it's candles and doilies yeah. so and a boutique type of place. Yeah. yeah. I'll, I'll walk out and I always say to my wife, the only antique there was the old guy behind the counter. <laughs> Um, which I can say because I'm getting old. So, yeah. uh, um, but you know, you want to suss it out a little bit so you don't waste time. And I try to maximize the day, um, you know, to go to one place that's maybe three hours away is not, you know, unless I know that it's, it's really good, it's hard to just hit that one spot. I try to string as many together as I can. No. Um, flea markets are good. Uh, you know, get, get your good shoes on. Cause you're going to walk a lot. Yeah. But I've found some really great lighters at flea markets. I mean, great lighters, great prices, you know, uh, garage sales. I've never found a single lighter at a garage yeah. sale ever. That's... So I like, stay away from that. What would your best, your rarest, your best find be that you found at a, uh, flea market or antique shop mm. well it was early on uh was in it was a and i'll even tell you the antique store it's called shady lane in Terre Haute, indiana and this would be i found seven camel c-note lighters all in the box the paper orange tags were still on the back but the they weren't dried out i, I kind of checked to see if i could remove them they were 18 dollars and 50 cents a piece and i wasn't really a well-known seller on eBay then. Mm. Um, but I still got between 75 and 125 each back then. Yeah. So that was like the first, you know, seven lighters, but for what I paid and what I got, that's what you were excited thinking. Oh, I was, <laughs> yeah, I was sweating it. I remember calling my wife going, look, I got to put 150 bucks on the credit card. You know, I was all nervous and now it's funny to think about, but, um, yeah, I did real well on them. And she's like, oh, this is good. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm still in that phase, you know, a year ago. So my first big find was uh, I bought a lighter for $20 and I sold it for 50. And I was like, yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's a win. <laughs> yeah. And, and then, it, you know, it's it started going from there. But so now what uh, with those camel ones, what do you think the, the value on those would be today? They got to be a couple hundred, I would think. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I'm not an expert on the camel stuff. I've had a fair amount and I've got the reference book. Um, I'm pretty fascinated by them. I think a lot of the designs are awesome. Um, if I had um, unlimited funds, I'd probably collect a lot of them. I think they're really cool. People ask these questions every single day in the Zippo groups. Uh, I mean, you see these pop up at least once or twice a month, uh, if not more. So I call them my burning questions. Do you smoke? I do not smoke. Uh, would have a cigar with my dad on occasion, but no, not not anything regularly. Very irregular. <laughs> so uh, this question, uh, we didn't talk about it, but what is your EDC or do you have an EDC? Oh yeah, it it fluctuates. It's it's always one of my lighters. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> good good advertisement, huh? Yeah, you know, it's yeah. A, you get in conversations with people, they'll ask what you do for a living, and you know, when I tell them, they go, "What?" You know, they don't. Yeah. I'll, I'll pull one out and show them. And... Now, as a collector, uh, I've purchased from you in the past uh, before I even knew knew who you were, and. You are a big advocate when it comes to orange stickers. So what is your stance on orange stickers 
uh, and Flint. Yeah, I, I just get rid of them. Um, you know, there are a few collectors and they want them on there. And it's like, you know what? It's your lighter. If you want them on, then if you buy a lighter and it's on there, leave it on there. But I don't know any serious collector. When I mean serious, just as they've been doing it a long time. Uh, you can be serious and want to leave the label on. That's fine. Yeah. But I don't know any serious collector would say, oh, I'd buy that lighter, but the label's off. So I'm not. Yeah. You know. Well, and, and I've had plenty of conversations. And one thing I tell people is what about the folks in Europe? Are their lighters less valuable than ours? Because they don't have a disclaimer telling you that a lighter creates fire. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so. right. Well, and, and the thing is you can, you can, the, the newer, the plastic ones they've been using for a long time now, they peel right off. Yeah. I mean, so you could peel it off. You could stick one on there. Yeah. It doesn't really That's, mean anything. Yeah. Um, I mean, the paper ones were tougher because they're, yeah. they're, they're hard they're to gone. get off at this point. Yeah. Yeah. They're, they're, dried they're on done there. for. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. That, and that, that's one thing I do tell a lot of collectors is I want to even, depending, you know, sometimes I may just peel it to see how far stuck on there it is because some <laughs> of them do come off fairly easy yep. still. Uh, but, I, I don't even touch them because as soon as you, oh, you know, you peel it off, you have to goo gone or brasso it off. <laughs> and then when you open up the, uh, the case, the Flint's already gone, you know, Flint life's about 20 years. And oh. so then you have to clean up the, all the mess inside. And it's a messy job. So when you are antiquing and finding old Zippo lighters, uh, you know, you, you probably uh, sell them, uh, or keep them. What do you do with the inserts? Do you clean them or do you leave them? It, it depends. Um, if the lighter is well used, I'll uh, before I sell it, I'll I'll clean out the flint tube. I might wipe the loose stuff off just so it's not getting all over my photo box or whatever. Yeah. Um, otherwise, I leave it. Now, if if it's a lightly used lighter. I might clean it a little bit, um, but the, generally speaking, I'm just cleaning it enough to not get my hands all dirty because some people like it that way. And if I'm selling the lighter, then I'll let, you can't put the dirt back on. So, right. you know, uh, if I'm keeping it, I clean it. <laughs> uh, it makes and sense. Uh, a, that's a good point. Yeah. I've got a fair amount of used, you know, vintage stuff that I just like the design or whatever. Right. And I, I try to clean it up. Not, not immaculate, but, yeah. but decently. Uh, Q-tips and vinegar. <laughs> oh yeah. I got a little ultrasonic <laughs> bath. I dropped. Oh, it. okay. That's that neat. Yeah. Up. And so, um, you all, uh, we kind of mentioned, uh, collectibles of the year already with the 90th, but yeah. what is your favorite collectible of the year? I got to like turn around and look at my case. <laughs> <laughs> you know, honestly, um, I really like the 90th. Um, I like the new Mysteries of the Forest a lot. And I, it's not a collectible of the year, but I got to give it like honorable mention. I really yeah. like the 65th anniversary Slim. Okay. Well, some people said, oh, the design's kind of boring. It's, it's, it's a good design, but I, I love the box on that thing, too. You know, I just I love the color. Or I love the way they did that triangular thing that yeah. was on the Denison boxes. So I'll just give that, that lighter a shout out. I think it's pretty cool. It, it doesn't get shouted out very often. So no, I like it. <laughs> as far as collecting goes, I, I think that's really... You know, when, when you see individuals who are, are selling, who are uh, kind of uh, out there in the Zippo community, it's really great to see their collections and what, uh, what they look for. And so thank you for sharing uh, about your collection. That concludes our first part with our conversation with Chuck Riley. 
Stay tuned for part two where we speak to Chuck Riley as the creator, where he talks about his custom ideas and his exclusives. So be sure to like, share, and subscribe so you get that notification, as well as go check out Riley66.com to see some amazing lighters. This is JRO Lights. We'll see you on the next one.